Yeah, um, born in 1914. I was brought up during the war in the East End of London. It was a rough, rough area, but all around it was rough. It still is. First time I got in trouble with the police, I was just 11 years old. Uh, first time I had to go to court, 11 years old. But I thought it was a big thing, you know what I mean? All the kids in the school, oh, and the teachers like, where was you yesterday, strange? Well, I was in court, you know what I mean? I like, think I was a big hard boy and all that game. <laughs> Wasted, really. Anyway, left school at 15. Worked in London for a little while, then I worked, when I went up north to work, and the first place I worked on up in north in Yorkshire was a new prison being built. Um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> ironic. And um, I was getting up there, was, the, the average wage was something like £7 for labourers and £9 for skilled labourers. Well, I was getting £13, about 13, 10, 10 shillings, which is 50 pence in this money. For 13 pound, 10 shillings I was getting. And so it was a lot of money. I was only 16, just over. So started going down to pubs. They let me in because I had pocketfuls of money, really, compared with the local people. And uh, so I started getting drunk very early in life. And uh, I'd done that for four and a half years. Coming with drunkenness also comes, obviously, problems with getting in trouble, like rows and fights and what have you. Uh, it's all the same package. At 20 years old, I ran away to sea. And uh, my mum and dad was on holiday. I went to sea. I didn't know where I was going. I just joined the ship. I went down to the docks with my mate. And he was going away to sea as a plumber. So they said to me, why don't you go away, mate? I said, no, I'm so I'm working. I had a good job. They said, go away. I said, you see the world. It'll be good for you. So I signed up. This was on the... On the Monday, this was. So I signed all the papers. I had all my photos done. On the Wednesday, I went down, picked up my ID card and all that. They sent me to Southampton Thursday morning. I sailed Thursday afternoon. And I joined this ship and I left a note in doors for my mum and dad saying, gone away to sea, don't know where I'm going. I'll let you know when I can. <laughs> I was on this ship for about four days and I still don't know where, didn't know where we was going. So in the end, I sort of, because I've done a mug myself off, you know what I mean? I've come out of London and done mug myself off down there. So in the end, I said, so where are we going? He said, we're going to Jamaica. And I was on a banana boat. <laughs> no, you, don't, you don't come in on the last banana boat. I was on it. Anyway. And that was the start of a seven and a half year drunken spring. Uh, Jamaica was beautiful from what I see of it. I mean, Appleton Estate become the second name and it was lovely. And um, so everywhere I went, it was just drunk and this, drunk and this. In, the, in this, I was getting in trouble. I was in New Zealand uh, in my drunken stoop. I stole a pre, uh, post office van and the police was chasing me around New Zealand. And I thought to myself, well, I was so drunk, I thought to myself, if I go down this side of the road, which is the wrong side, and then pull over quick, the police are going to go straight on and smash into someone. So I'm driving man head on to someone, and as soon as I got near him, I'd pull over, thinking they was going to hit the police. But the police wouldn't have stooped with me, they stayed on the right side of the road. <laughs> anyway, ends up having a chase and getting, getting caught, and the copper gave me a few right-handers and kicked me a few times in the motor. <laughs> And in this, he broke his watch. And he had the cheek to stand up in court and say, Strange broke my watch, he's got to pay for it. But <laughs> uh, the judge was a bit more wise than that, he threw him out. <laughs> so anyway, I got fined, a big fine. Mates of mine got nicked on the next ship. And in New Zealand in them days, it was the, like the early 60s, like hard labour was hard labour. And my mates were on the next ship, all they'd done all day long was broke up massive big rocks threw them on the back of a lorry, and another lorry come and bought another load of massive big rocks from the smash up. They come back to the ship very fit, but I tell you, all they'd done was give me a fine, Mark Captain said, I pay his fine, and I had to work my way on for nothing, which is also well and good, not I mean? Anyway, I come out of the Merchant Navy, met up with a young lady, we got married, but she was also a drunkard like me. We weren't alcoholics, we were just drunkards. Well... <laughs> That causes problems straight away because it's like two firing irons together, isn't it, all the time? 
goes and works on the railway for a little while and they sent me around demolition. So as we're knocking the buildings down in these two Irish guys, we just sold everything. The timbers, the bricks, we used to clean them up. At the tea boy he cleaned all the bricks up for us. We sold the bricks, timbers, lead, copper, everything we can't. So we was getting good money again, but everything, once again, was just booze. I didn't, I was never really into drugs. When I was in the Navy, I did take some puff. I was in Kenya, and I've got to be honest, it blew the back of my head off. And I thought, wow. And I, I thought, oh, I, when I was there, I thought I was super. And then, oh, wow. <laughs> and um, I'm sure a few people know about that. But anyway. Getting drunk, getting in trouble, and then one night I had a row with a guy in a pub, and um, it turns out he was the bouncer. And uh, <laughs> I somehow come off, off best. I don't know how, because I'm not a fighter, really. That's why I've kept all my good looks, don't we? <laughs> and uh, I somehow come off best, and uh, next day someone phoned me up. They said, um, George, that geezer had a row with last night. He was a bit of a villain, and uh, he stuck a gun in my head last night looking for you. So anyway, um, I thought, well, I'd better get something to protect myself. So I found a mate of mine who was a bank robber. So I said to him, can you lend me, can you lend me your gun? So he gave me his sawn off, sawn off shotgun, which he used to use. He said, if you shoot the geezer with it, he said, dump it down the sewers. He said, if you don't, give it back to me, because I could use it like me. I said, OK. <laughs> So I'm sitting indoors waiting for this guy to come around to me, like, and I thought, I'll shoot. How I was going to tell the police what I was doing with a sawn off shotgun, I don't know. But I thought, if I'll shoot him, like, first, then I'll get self defence. Anyway, a mate of mine came around, he was a heroin addict, and he said, You've got some trouble, George. I said, Well, yeah, blah, blah, blah. He said, Well, let's go down, because he'd already shot a geezer, this mate of mine. He said, Let's go down, he said, We'll shoot him. I said, well, I ain't really my style, you know what I mean? I thought, I'm going to wait here for coming come to me, you know what I mean? <laughs> but no, he's, he's insisting, you come with me, he said. He said, you go in the pub, he said, let him see, he said, you come out, he said, and you dive out of the way, he said, and I'll do him as he comes out. <laughs> I said, OK, so I walked in this pub, and first of all, the guy, I, I knew this guy, had a big um, Austin Vanderplar. Right, because he was supposed to be a bit of a gangster and he had his Vanderplar. When I looked out the door, there's this Vanderplar sitting, sitting outside my house and the geezer driving, I said, he was the biggest, ugliest man you've ever seen. He bars all over his face. I, oh. I said, look, you don't put me in the middle. I thought I was being took for a ride to be dumped somewhere. You know what I mean? <laughs> no, no, I wouldn't do that to you, George. I wouldn't do that to you. He said, come on, let's go and do this geezer. Anyway, we goes in, goes in the pub. I walked all around the pub and I thank God now. He wasn't in there. And I'll come out, my mate said, Duck, he said, Duck, he said, he ain't in there, he ain't in there. <laughs> so anyway, um, the guest in the car, he goes, So my mate said, I need this gun, George. I said, What do you mean I need it? About you need it. He said, I want to shoot the geese who's driving. Anyway, it turns out chasing the geese. He said, What am I going to do with you? He said, I want to give you something. He said, He said, I need to stop him. I said, What's that? He said, And he gave me a sword. He said, take this sword, he said, when he comes there, he said, you swing it as hard as you can. He said, it'll take his leg right off, he said. <laughs> uh, I said, okay, anyway, I had this sword for a long while. But he never come round. I got me gun back, give it back to the, my mate, and he said, oh, I'm robber. I went into a shop in Clacton a few weeks or about a month later, I think it was, and who's in there, the geezer. I went, I thought, oh, but I thought, well, at least we're on level peggings. We've been in a shop, no, I mean, night. He ain't got his mob with him, and I ain't got no one with him, and he'll be sober, and I'll be sober. Anyway, he talked it out, and he said, look, it was a mistake, I meant to clump the gear. Because what happened was, he'd give me a dig in the back as he, as he walked by. And so I just spun round, and that's when it all went off. He said, I was playing about, he said, I meant to hit the bloke next to you, he said, I accidentally hit you. And so I could have nearly done a murder and got life for a bloke playing about. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's, that's, how, that's how life is. Anyway, where was I? So that sorted that out. And uh, I carried on with my life, getting drunk. Me and the wife, we had to split up in the end, otherwise one of us would have been dead, you know what I mean? And uh, I, remember she, I remember going to sleep one night and woke up and she was hitting me with the iron. I mean, so, anyway, 
we are, we are split up. So we got divorced and she went her way and I went my way. The last I've heard of her, she's got the sack from where she was for, for being drunk and telling the boss exactly what she thought of him. <laughs> Which ain't the best thing to do, I suppose. But anyway, I, was a, I had a filthy mouth net on me. I mean, I had a filthy mouth. Anyway, I'm, I was going doing my own thing for about two or three years, a little flat and then all sorts of crazy stuff, as my brother said. And, and then I got a job and I was going up and down living in Manchester for a year. And uh, I come home on a Christmas Eve and they said, right, we're going to lay you off. I thought, that's very nice, being laid off on a Christmas Eve. I just, I just uh, got married and I just had a, my wife just had a baby. So very nice.